Okay. Okay, so I conveniently forgot my power cord today. So that's so I'm trying to conserve my computer power here. So uh, today, today we're going to uh, do our last little graphing exploration. Uh, we're gonna just uh, have a chance for you guys to ask me any any uh, sort of general overall content questions that have been bugging you or that are outstanding from the semester, um, and basically wrap up our our uh, our stuff today. So I sent everybody a link in the announcements, and that link is to a, a folder that has uh, four different files in it. So download those to your drive or, or save them to your desktop, however you um, prefer to work. So it's working? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so the first step is just download those data. Um, two of them are very, very similar. So, two, so one of them says um, summary statistics and is an Excel file. Another one that just says full data or final data or all data, whatever I said, um, is uh, that opinion poll data that I just described plus all of the original raw data. And so that one's relatively large. And some, several of you guys said last time that you're happy, your computer was having problems and we had these really large files, it was lagging. And so, so I, I provide you the full data, if you guys are curious, uh, but I also, just excise the summary statistics so that um, if you do have a, if you have a laggy computer or something, you can at least look at the results. And so, um, and so that's what this stuff is up here. So um, in this case, this, this is the full data, all the years. So this is, so this shows all the years. And then if we scroll to the bottom, or if you're on the summary statistics file itself, this is all you have is the summary. We just want to make sure that we're, we're all on the same page. So what we have here is we have your data merged with all of your previous colleagues' data for the last you know, 15 years or so. And so if we look at that, let's make this a little bit larger so you can see this more easily. All right. So uh, firstly, things are organized by, um, by they're, they're not organized in the order that you you know, that we collected the questions, they're, they're, they're binned as in groups. So the demographic questions are all together here, et cetera. Um, uh, you know, so here's the dangerous species questions, um, climate change questions, uh, um, uh, seafood, which is probably the most important one for us today. Um, but so the seafood, and so first thing to note is, we have an overall respondent to so all the people over all the years we've ever asked. That's there. This is like all together, right? And then as we scroll down, it's just the data for the year 2006. And then just the data for 2007, et cetera, right? Down to your year, obviously, is 2021. And so your year is, is this one for this question. Now, as we know, not every single question is, was asked every single year. Some questions were asked every single year. Others were asked for a little while, then stopped, et cetera. So, so there won't always be an answer for everything every year. And the other thing I just want to explain is, um, yeah, okay, here we go. So we'll get the seafood example. Sometimes we modify, we still ask the question, we ask it, Pretty similar, but we modify the answers sometimes. We modify the options that people could respond. So, for example, in the first few years, we're asking about when people purchase seafood. Do they always ask where it comes from? They occasionally, etc. And in talking to people, it sounded like some people were some people that never ate seafood, just ever. They were a little bit confused by the never option. It's like, well, I never answer, which is true, but I never purchased it in the first place, right? So. It's not really unsure. So we added this category of I do not eat seafood, right? Just to sort of take care of that confusion. And so what you see is for the first few years, there's a space for that variable, but it's not, uh, there's obviously no data there because we didn't ask it. And then at some point it'll, it'll wink off. And again, as before, the first number is the raw counts, 
So how many people responded in these different bins of, of responses? And then the number below it is the relative amount proportion. It's not percentage, it's proportion. So this is uh, 0 0.1, which is you know 10%, but to be clear, it's not percentages. Um, uh, yeah, and then and then some, and not every single one, but a lot of these we, were, were these things we can be translated into some type of um, scale, some type of quantitative scale uh, that's been done over here. So there's this column that says score. So always uh, asking, you know, got a one, you know, um, never got a zero, etc. And so that's been translated to a scale here where if everybody always, if 100% of our people always ask what, where the seafood comes from, that would be a one, right? And if, if, if everybody said they never asked, that would be a zero. So the, the score is generally speaking range between zero and one. And so this is the, an average and a standard error, et cetera. And then, um, uh, and then in some of our other ones, for example, are do you support this particular public policy? Those are positive to negative. So people say they, they support, they don't support. In those cases, the scales go from, you know, they go positive if they were supportive, and it actually goes negative if they were if they were anti that. So, so if you're looking at those relative score numbers, that's what it is. So first is download the summary statistics one, or excuse me, open it up. And let's just take five minutes and you guys play around and just sort of poke around and, and see. So what we're going to do today is you guys are going to make a graph of your choice about some aspect of public perception of coastal resources. So, um, so you have a free hand to make whatever interesting quantitative graph you want. But let's first take five minutes and just look at the data. So just poke around and make sure it makes sense. And uh, so we'll pause for five minutes here. So, so those all sound good. Those are all, all good ideas for things to grab. I'll just, rem just remind you guys that um, in some cases we have the raw, you know, the proportion for each thing. In other cases we have have that if it's a it's a relative measure um, as a as a quantitative number as a as a, as a scale on the, on the far right section. Um, I'll also note that if you guys are looking at any of the what did you feel about these management. Um, uh, these various management actions or, or, or policy of the past. Um, when you look at that, that might be look a little bit confusing in terms of how the data is uh, uh, displayed. If people said they were unsure, that didn't get scored. So in the, in the context of do you support this policy, if I said, yes, I support this policy, that's a, that's a one. If they said they were neutral, that's a zero. And if they said uh, I'm unsupportive, that's a minus one, right? So, so there's there's numbers in there, and so we were calculating the average, et cetera. If people said I'm unsure, I don't know. That was not calculated as zero. That was just left blank for the score. Um, so, uh, but to give you some additional context, there's also there the, the summary of the proportion of people that said they're unsure. So you can also use that as a potential indicator. Um, but just wanted to explain that, that that's how that was calculated. Um, yeah, okay, then the other one is, is just to say that uh, absolutely you guys can um, you know, do whatever you want. Uh, my suggestion though uh, is, is to at least consider, consider a little bit of manipulation of the data in the sense of, so if you were looking at offshore oil drilling or, or public support for offshore oil drilling, you could, we have all these categories, right? Which you, could put those all individually up. That's not wrong per se, but it might be more helpful to look at supportive of it or or opposed to it. So, for example, if you were looking at the 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 amount of folks that were opposed to offshore drilling, you might want to add the people that say we should totally ban it to the number of people say we should reduce it. Right. So you can or whatever the bearing is. So realize you can use that those numbers as as their output. You can also combine them and merge them in ways that might make more sense for your particular uh, uh, visualization. Cool, all right, have at it. Is the what? Uh, harvesting collecting. Oh, okay. 
So, so, so over harvesting basically. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to just uh, touch on, uh, I don't want you guys to use this for, for the, you use this data you're using for this graphing exercise today. It's like all good. <clears throat> but because we're, we don't have any more time together face to face, I just wanted to show you another uh, data set in here that's available to you guys. Now, I hope, every, I hope everybody's making progress with their seafood surveys, right? So those are due Friday. Had a couple people have had some COVID issues. Um, uh, and so if you need more time from Friday, I can give you some more time. I, I would like everybody to get it in by Friday because it takes me a while to sort of go through them and, and check them. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so to be explicit, if you, if you have a, a health reason why you can't go out, I can give you some additional time, but I don't want to give everybody additional time, right? I, I can't I keep pushing it back. As it is, um, we've, I've already pushed it back later than we normally do it. Um, and so, uh, so for our final wrap up stuff, I, I won't have the data to give you guys. You won't have data to explore. So what I'm giving you instead is data from a previous year. Um, so you guys can at least explore the, the, the general patterns, but I wanted to orient you to the data sheet real quick. So, so first though, any, any big stumbling blocks so far with the surveys in the last few days? Everything okay? Everybody's making progress? Everybody making progress? Yes, that was very, it's very quiet, very quiet. I, was like, I had somebody showing up on yesterday. <laughs> I, I called the restaurant, so wanted before I went over there, I wanted, I thought it was a slow time, which I don't think it was in all restaurants. And then I just said I was a student, I was basically conducting surveys, and then she hung up on me. Oh, okay. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Lots of love, lots of love. <laughs> Well, sorry about that. Uh, uh, more challenges of the times of COVID. Um, what you guys are, any other, any other things? Don't want to cut, cut off that discussion. Any other comments? Okay. So um, most, of this, most of this data sheet will look very familiar to you because it is the stuff you've been filling, filling in. <laughs> so for example, I'm on the, the restaurant qualitative here. And so all this stuff should look familiar, right? All this stuff, raw answers, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what I've done over here, so you've done everything from me over. Here, I've actually coded the answers so that we could um, have some type of numerical estimate. And so here's the legend. So if people said, nobody ever asks, that I've got a zero, said almost none, that's 1%, so 0 0.1, et cetera. Half, if people said half, you know, scored at a 0.5, et cetera. So put that in here and then was able to calculate the, the, the answers. And so here you go. Are you familiar with MSC Seafood Watch or other, other guides for selecting that? Um, this particular individual or this particular restaurant was zero, zero, right? And then if we scroll down to the bottom, uh, over here, it gives, it gives the breakdowns. So 68% of the restaurants said nobody ever asks. 8% of the time they said people almost know, et cetera. And then, um, and then down here, I've actually uh, binned the questions. So the, the qualitative responses are, are summarized here. So that's in the qualitative sheet. In the quantitative sheet, again, the first bunch of responses are all super normal to you. It's all the categories you're filling in, all the data sheet you're filling in. Um, there is this stuff right here, um, which is, uh, it, it's the, the detailed taxonomic breakdown of the organism. You're not to fill that out. You don't have to fill it out. That's sort of, that's where the columns are kind of little accordion together and you just sort of skip over them. Um, so you just put this stuff in here. The, it's the catfish or it's the whatever. And then uh, I go in and, and adjust this stuff. And so this is the phylum that we're talking about, the class, the order, the family, the genus, the species, right? In some cases, we know things down to the species, which is cool. In other cases, we don't, but we know down to the genus, or we know down to the family, or we know to the order, or what have you. So it's, it's as specific as we can get. So that's what that is. And then, um, and then if we scroll over to here, these are things that you've not seen. Or they, or so so you, you're entering into up to other descriptor or any comments maybe. Um, okay, so then what I have right here is basically what we did last week, right? Which is we, we took a guide and we said, here's a seafood item. Is it 
should I eat it or should I not eat it? Sustainably harvested, is it not sustainably harvested? Is it green, is it red, right? Those questions. And so as we saw last week, for one species, it could potentially be all green. It could potentially be all red. It could potentially be, well, sometimes green and sometimes red. And so that's what's represented here. So this is, for example, AO is the most optimistic take. And an ideal, you know, if you happen to get the right chunk of fish, is that a good buy? Yes. Okay. And then the more conservative, well, there, there is a population out there that's bad to avoid. And so that's the, that's the bin we're putting into, right? So, so that's what that is. And then if we just look off to the right, this is something totally new that you've not seen before. Just wanted to give you a quick overview if you're, if you're interested in exploring the data. Uh, so this is distance that the food traveled to get to us. Uh, now, if there's no geographic information, we don't know where it came from, obviously, there's, we can't estimate the, the distance, right? So this is only for items that are, are um, you know, had, had, had a location. The short version is, if it was, if it was in, you know, Tokyo, we calculated the pathway from Tokyo as, as a great circle distance, Tokyo to Los Angeles, and Los Angeles to wherever we are. So, so wherever the restaurant or market is. Um, uh, and, and so then uh, if it traveled by these different possibilities, we've estimated the associated energy and emissions associated with that travel, right? So, so rail is railway, water is shipping, road is on you know, trucks, uh, air is airplanes. And then from that, we've, we've with some simple estimates of emissions per pound of material tra transported average, We've estimated the amount of emissions in terms of CO2, in terms of volatile organics, et cetera. And then if you scroll over to the right, um, there's a presumed method. So we have all the possible methods, but then with some simple assumptions, we've, we've said the most likely course. So if it was ahi tuna in a sushi restaurant that came from Indonesia, it was, we assume that it was flash frozen, put on an airplane, and it traveled that distance via to LA on an airplane, and then it went on a truck from LAX to the sushi restaurant. If it is canned salmon from Alaska, we assume that it probably came, if it was someplace close, close to Washington area, probably came over rail down to us to LA, and then from LA onto a truck to, to the location, or through, ship, through a ship you know, came from long haul shipping down. So, um, so we don't know this, but these are our best guesses as to the associated emissions associated with those different seafood items. Um, and so that's what, so that's what that is. So again, I won't have your, I won't have this data processed in time uh, uh, because I'm letting you guys turn it in, in late. Um, but uh, if you guys are curious, you're more than welcome to look at that. So I just want to make sure you guys, you guys understood that. Um, and then uh, next, uh, so some folks have been coming to uh, uh, office hours and asking some general questions. Uh, you know, since this is our last day together, physically together, um, uh, I just want to do a, a real super quick summary and, and make sure, see if you guys have any questions for me, um, given that, uh, you know, we're, we're done with the semester. And so just a quick overview. Um, we started off the semester. Uh, we started off the semester, um, you know, talking about uh, the coast in a, in a broad sense and ways to think about it. You guys um, used a lot of terms like waves, beach, the immediate littoral fringe as as your representative of the coast, which is totally normal, um, and that's that's how most people people think about the coast. But then we talked about how actually the coast is that, absolutely is that, but it's actually stuff that's broader. So we talked about, for example, these sort of deep sea lakes, and we talked about this sort of oak woodland, uh, crazy critters, this lady would have her quinceanera in a, in a church made out of coral, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. All of it is, is related to coastal. We talked about where we were born. Um, we talked about um, the very clear, um, uh, a pattern of coastal versus inland, whether it's voting choices, whether it's educational, whether it's 
its income, whatever, the, the coast really is different than most of the rest of the, the world, both terrestrial and marine. Um, so we talked about all that kind of stuff. We talked about uh, the threats. Again, our, our key overarching threats that we see time and time again, um, pollution, climate change is a subset of that, but pollution, over harvesting of resources, um, fragmentation and destruction of ecosystems and invasive species as the sort of traditional ones. And then the fifth one we, we talked about, we saw a lot of examples this semester is the bureaucracy, the, the, the difficulty in getting the management done, given this really intense overlapping interest in the coast zone, everybody's on top of everybody, everybody wants to do the thing in the same location, um, all of that. So those five things are, are the key sort of overarching um, um, uh, context and stressors that we're trying to manage. Um, we, we spent some time talking about just the, the physics of the ocean, uh, what water is like, the fact that we have this, you know, we're on this water planet, this awesome place that has solid, liquid, gaseous water at the same time all over the place. Um, and, and we spent some time talking about that. Uh, we talked about, you know, implications for that for life and, and, and where things are distributed around the planet, et cetera. Um, the fact that most of the ocean is dark, most of the ocean is deep, more than four kilometers deep on average uh, in terms of the bottom of the ocean, et cetera. We, um, um, oh, I don't know where um, so yeah, so then, then we talked about um, uh, challenges and we talked about the, the growth of regionalism and the notion of once we had things like air pollution, it was hard to manage air pollution just from a city. And we started going to larger and larger units uh, beyond the traditional political boundaries to make decisions. We talked about the history of that, particularly in the context of California. And one of the classic examples of that would be uh, the California Coastal Commission. And so uh, the Coastal Commission, again, uh, started with people being ticked off at folks in Malibu and folks in Sea Ranch and very worried that the coast was going to become the exclusive purview of the wealthy and the powerful and the elite and everybody else wouldn't be allowed to have access or do stuff. Um, and so uh, the political leaders at the time didn't think that was important. So the citizens rallied and passed their own proposition, Prop, Prop 20, and it worked. Then, then the elected representatives went, oh my God, we should do something. So then they created their own formal law that actually uh, uh, changed the state constitution. And that gave us um, the California Coast, uh, that, that was that was a consequence of the Coastal Act that was from 1976. And in there are entrenched a lot of things that we think are, we think of now as fundamental to coastal management, California at least, things like public access to the coast, um, uh, doing coastal zone management, the, 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 the federal task that we're all supposed to be doing, that's delegated to the states, but the California Coast Commission is the entity that does, that implements the, the majority of the coastal zone management decisions and, and, and makes the call on things. We talked about uh, cliffside erosion and home developments and seawalls and all those kinds of things. Um, so that was going on there. Um, uh, yeah, we also talked about just some of the geographies, um, and we did a sort of a intro to the, the the ocean based on depth and physical location, and then uh, the the terms for critters that are distributed across the ocean realm: mustelon, plankton, nekton, uh, um, demersal or benthic critters. Um, so we did all that. Uh, we also talked about um, uh, other other examples, most recently we've been talking about seafood and over harvesting and issues related to that. We saw, um, uh, had a lot of le recorded lectures for you guys on marine protected areas. We, we talked about the marine protected areas in our trip um, uh, and the idea that we've historically taken different approaches to managing seafood fisheries that include things like size limits and timing limits and things of that nature. But the, the most uh, uh, one of the most useful tools in recent years, newest tools in uh, Polynesians have been using a form of this for a, for a long time, but, but, but in the modern sense, marine protected areas. So a geographic protection of critters and 
in the context of our class that mostly is talking about restricting fishing or either partially or completely restricting fishing to reduce fishing pressure in an area. And you guys saw, very, again, various, did lots of readings on that, saw different examples, uh, what have you. Um, uh, and we talked about the fact that uh, while aquaculture is a huge thing, mariculture is a huge thing, it's, it's, it's problematic in California. We saw that on our trip, et cetera. It's difficult to get it permitted, even though we, that's where all the action is in terms of the growth, in terms of adding more, more protein from the sea to our human diets. Um, uh, so yeah, so, that, that, that's, so we, we start off with general stuff, and then we've recently, in recent weeks, been talking more specific examples of, of some of these challenges that we're facing. Cool. Anybody have any general questions about stuff we covered? Anything that, that we read that you're wondering about or, or something we touched on in lecture that you just were thinking about asking, but you didn't? Here's your, here's your shot. Shot. What are the kind of concerns with the, the aquaculture? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, uh, the question is, why is there such a version in the state of California to, to aquaculture? I can't really answer that. I mean, I mean, so there's a couple different answers. One is that there's very few staff, very few folks that are in the permitting offices to issue the permits. But that in and of itself doesn't make sense. So, so uh, several folks and I have been talking about the fact that the abalone farm closed down. That was the that was the abalone facility that we did not visit, that we visited in past years, but they've shut down in COVID. They don't exist anymore. That would have been just south of Rancho Marino, just south of where we stayed the first night on our trip in Caicos. Um, uh, and everybody's comments are exactly the same whenever we start talking about it. Everybody's like, God, we really need to keep that facility open because we'll never get another sea, we'll never get another seawater system permitted in California. So as everybody says that. The conservative people, the liberal people, the young people, the old people, the everybody that knows anything knows that it won't be permanent, and and that's ridiculous in my opinion. Why do they still We have a massive environmental bureaucracy here, so um, uh, I should pause this. I don't want to. I want to record this. I'll turn my recording back on. Okay, good. Yeah. So great. So um, so all kinds of wonderful opportunities for you guys in coastal and marine management if you guys are so interested obviously not all of you are going to do that for a career but but um, all kinds of neat stuff awaits and this really is a, a place with a lot of action be it bureaucracy be it whatever it's a place where you guys can make a, a significant impact and we have a high demand for for folks like you guys going into private firms going into nonprofits going into government agencies to to grapple with these these challenges we've been talking about um, Okay, cool. So uh, that, that covered that. Yeah, cool. So then, um, so all good. So do you guys have any 